everyone, my name is John. You're watching the Plot, and welcome to Adobe Quickies. Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to hello clone yourself. Easy as this. Um, we're going to get into it. This is a Adobe Quickies. <laughs> this is Adobe Sorry. Quickies. Sorry. Enjoy. My name is John, you're watching The Palladium. Welcome to the first ever episode of Adobe Quiggies. I'm so glad you could be here. And today, I'm going to be teaching you, as the intro implied, to clone yourself. It's a pretty simple process. It's one of the easiest effects you can do, and we're gonna get into it. Um, so to see how you can do it in Premiere Pro, go to the timestamp down below. We're gonna be starting off with After Effects though first. So to import two clips, um, I have two separate clips here, but if you have one big clip, you can go to where it splits between two scenes and you can just go Control Shift D. And basically what that will do is split your clip in half depending on where your little playhead was. Um, pretty simple. So, yeah, just make sure that both of your clips have the same lighting, because if they don't, it's going to be near impossible to get them to look very similar. Now, mine had slightly different white balance, but that's pretty easy to correct, and if you feather it, it won't look too bad. We're going to start us off by splitting our two clips so you can see both of us in the same frame. Now, to do this... Um, Take your top clip, the one that's above the other one, and just select it so that it's highlighted, and go up to the top here. It may be a little bit different from, for you, um, but just make sure Tools is selected in your Window tab. Just make sure that's checked, because otherwise you won't be able to get this. So just hit your little pen tool or pre press G on your keyboard, select that, and basically just make a nice um, quick selection, four points, so start up here. Um, if you want to zoom out, you just go down to the bottom left here, magnification ratio pop-up, and fit will fill the shot to your screen, to your little preview here, but I suggest going on a st slightly smaller size so you can actually see what you're working with. So make a little selection outside of your video ratio, and just make a straight line down the middle and see the way this will work is if we go all the way around and then click our first point again it'll create a box and this is the part of the clip that wasn't cut out but the other part is the clip part of the clip that was now what you want to do is you want to hit this little arrow down here click that left click and then go down to your masks tab once you click that, you'll see your masks. Now, whatever color this little rectangular selection was will be the color of this little box here. And you can see they correspond quite nicely. So you just want to click the little arrow on this one. And you can see you have a few options here, but we're focused on our feather. Because as you can see, if we zoom all the way in, let's say 200, you can see there's a little line here where the white balance changes from kind of a bluish to kind of an orangish. We're gonna go back and zoom out because that's a hideous view. And we're just going to feather it. And if you look, I suggest about 100 pixels. It depends on how close your characters are. If they're my distance, eh, about 150, 100. Um, but if they get any closer, I suggest going below 100. But as you can see, if we select our selection tool again, or you can hit just V on your keyboard, you can see that line is essentially gone. It is completely gone. Now you can see this is orangish and this is bluish, but the line in between is fuzzy. And if people are focusing on your characters, what's in the background doesn't really matter. And as you can see, I've essentially cloned myself. Both people are going at the same time. They're talking at the same time. Um, I didn't sync them up, so the clips aren't synced. The dialogue is not synced but I'm sure that's something you can do quite effortlessly just by moving or um, splitting at certain points. All right, here we are in Premiere. I'm gonna teach you how to do the same exact thing we did before, but in Premiere. Here we have our two clips. 
nice and not synced at all because why would I be bothered? Um, one thing you want to make sure you do is add some sort of denoise because both clips over top of each other might create a lot of noise unless you have a really good microphone. But um, regardless, I suggest you get some denoise and bump up your decibels to about four or five just to kind of get a little bit of that noise out of the way. Then what you want to do is take your top clip and then go over to your opacity settings. This will be under your effect controls and you can toggle that by going to window and then effect controls or you can hit shift five to toggle it. See if I do shift five, it'll go back to that. So you can always just hit shift five and you'll always just be able to go back to that. Now select your clip once again, go over to a passing and you'll see a pen tool, free job Bayesier and just select that. And then you might want to shrink your um, shot here just so you can see the boundaries with this little tool right here select a zoom level and then just make basically make a fine line right down the middle just make sure your um character or subject does not go beyond that line otherwise they will get cut um cut off and that will not look very good and as you can see by doing that and selecting four points and just clicking the final point which is coincidentally your first point, you've created a rectangu perfectly rectangular um, selection that goes around your subject. And see, if we move this, right, our character will vanish. Um, and that's not what we want. So you just wanna make sure your line is in a fair balance so that none of your characters cross it. And if it does, you'll have to rotoscope it, but we'll learn about that in a later episode. All right, so basically, if I zoom in here, right, let's say 200%, you can see that there's this line that isn't very appealing. And you can see the feather right here is what's changing that. If my feather is zero, there's this big stark line that goes down the middle. If it's much higher, you can see the line essentially vanishes. And that's what you want. You want to make it as seamless as possible, but if you make the feather too high, you'll see that your character begins to vanish. Both of them, actually, which is kind of funny. Um, so you, you don't want to do that. So just make sure your feather isn't too high, but also not too low. Um, I find 100 to be good, but if your characters are any closer together, I suggest going below 100. And if they're much farther out, you can go above 100. This is also a nice little tool if you hit inverted. <laughs> it just makes them both vanish because what this does is it inverts your selection so whatever is selected will be invisible and whatever wasn't selected will be visible this is also very nice you see this dotted line right here that tells you where your feather goes out to so the higher you make that see the larger it gets larger it gets so you just want to make sure that doesn't go into your character at all because otherwise that will be very noticeable and not look very good all right well once you've done that you've essentially cloned yourself perfectly and you can see that they're talking to each other just fine i didn't sync my footage which you should probably do but make sure that your dialogue actually sounds good and not another um good thing to know is if you select something right you can select all these clips and then go sequence render selection and it'll basically render this so that it will play back quicker than it did before but that's essentially how you clone yourself inside of premiere pro and after effects so if you enjoyed the video please please i beg I don't think you, you don't have to do it, but if you could like the video and share it with some people who are just getting into filmmaking, or if you know some people who are struggling, please send it to them. It might help them out a lot. And um, subscribe if you haven't already. It would help out the channel a lot too, and it'd be greatly appreciated. And I'll see you all in the next one. Adios. I don't typically say that. Adios, amigos.